Hello and welcome to another standard video here in the Duskmorn preview event, so thanks again to Wizards for having me. Today we're taking a look at a mono-black combo deck using Bloodletter of Aklazot, a card from Ixalan, which says if an opponent would lose life during your turn, they lose twice that much life instead. And now we also get to play with Grievous Wound, which will enchant the opponent, they cannot gain life, and whenever they are dealt damage, they lose half their life around it up. So if we have both Grievous Wound and Bloodletter in play and hit the opponent, just for one damage even, then we get to half the opponent's life total and then double that damage with Bloodletter to instantly win the game, no matter which life total our opponent has. And then we can also maybe win the game on turn 4 in this deck, thanks to Unstoppable Slasher, a 3 mana 2-3 with Death Touch. When it deals comma damage to a player, they lose half their life around it up. So very similar to using the Grievous Wound, we just need to connect with the Unstoppable Slasher, which may be a little bit more difficult, but it is a 2-3 with Death Touch, so it does tend to trade for opposing creatures, and when it dies, if it had no counters on it, we get to return it to the battlefield tapped with two stun counters on it. So it will stay tapped for two turns, but then once again we'll be able to attack with it. If it trades once again it will have two stun counters, so it will just keep coming back. Very flavorful. So yeah, if you play a turn 3 slasher, the opponent just has to respect the possibility of a turn 4 bloodletter, so that might also cause them to play differently and maybe suboptimally, and then even if they remove the slasher, it will eventually come back. And then if the opponent has lots of blockers, making it difficult for us to attack, we can still rely on the Vine Lasher to deal damage and help us uh, have the opponent's life total with Grievous Wound and maybe win the game with Bloodletter. Just playing a Vine Lasher with Offspring and then playing Fabled Passage can be very effective with a Grievous Wound in play, so that can also sometimes win the game out of nowhere. And that's why we're playing Fabled Passage in our Mono Black deck. can also be a way for us to enable Delirium, which is relevant for the Demonic Council, a 2-mana Demonic quite literally, we can search up any demon and put it into our hand. The only demon is going to be the Bloodletter, but it is one of our centerpieces. And then if we have Delirium enabled, meaning four or more card types in the graveyard, we can now search up any card in our deck, like the original Demonic Tutor. And then we can maybe find our Grievous Wound as well. And then we have even more tutor effects with the Insatiable Avarice. We'll often cast this just for three mana to draw three cards at the cost of three life. But if we pay additional mana, we can also tutor up a specific card and put it on the top of our deck. And then maybe even draw into it in the very same turn. And then our removal includes Cut Down and Go for the Throat, still the most efficient answers out there. And then Deep Cavern Bat can also maybe disrupt the opponent's game plan or clear path for our combo finish. And then a mana base is very simple, just 20 swamps and 4 Fable Passage. So a very streamlined deck, all 4 offs, and we'll see how it plays out. So let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a pretty clunky opening hand. Only 2 lands, lots of 4 and 5 mana plays. This is a bit better. So this is maybe a hand where we want to Council, get our Demon, and then Slasher into Demon could set up the kill. Maybe let go of Vine Lasher, since Avarice can also be a way to refuel in a grindier matchup. But yeah, best case scenario, get our Demon, play Slasher, play Demon, win the game. It's probably not going to be that simple. Especially against the Tokens deck, our opponent's going to have ample blockers. Our opponent knows about the Blood Letter, so... That also lets them prepare for the slasher a bit better. At least the shop doesn't immediately make a token. So, pretty unlikely for the opponents not to have either interaction or some counter spell here. Smoky lounge, alright. I guess we just win after all. Was not expecting this, but that's the combo. Hit you, half your life total, double it with Bloodletter, and that's game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand has Bloodletter plus Grievous Wounds, but two lands is probably not going to get there. Alright, this is a bit better. And we've got the Slasher plus Bloodletter combo. Do I keep a second slasher or maybe Avarice to draw if they answer the blood letter? I think that's maybe a bit better. And I could play a one mana vine lasher and then next turn fetch since we don't have a two drop anyways. 
our opponent maybe a domain style deck with up the beanstalk. So they could have a leyline binding as instant speed interaction for some of our creatures. And there's up the beanstalk. Well, hopefully we can uh, set up the combo before our opponent gets to the late game, since that's where things can get pretty ugly. Cut down is not going to have many targets. But yeah, technically we could attack for a lethal next turn if our opponent just taps out for a ramp spell, for instance. Armadillo gets a lance, and they can likely cast a cheap Leyline Binding here. Yep. So if I play Bloodletter, they just exile it. Maybe start by attacking first, and then play Bloodletter second main. And then I'll be forced to exile the Slasher. Gonna be Zur, which can animate a leyline binding here. Hits us for six. Alright, we do have a couple good top decks. So with the swamp, I get to play a land, trigger Vine Lasher. Avarice, if it targets my opponents, they lose three life. So that would be six. So yeah, it's not quite going to be lethal. So instead, we probably Avarice with Spree to search up a card, even though I could cut down Zur to shut down the lifelink on the binding. I think I would rather tutor something up. Although, yeah, cut down is somewhat tempting, since then we get a clean attack in with our creatures too. Maybe I'll start by attacking. Opponent takes it. And then we have to think about what to tutor up. Grievous Wound comes to mind. And then... We drew another Grievous Wound, so a little bit redundant. Still good with the uh, Vine Lasher as well. Opponent plays an Overlord, triggers up the Beanstalk. And we see... Lich Knight's Conquest, which can also provide a ton of value here. So we take six. And we drew a land. Alright, so play Grievous Wound into a land. We'll also shut down their life gain. Trigger Vine Lasher. Opponent loses half their life. And doubled by Bloodletter is just game. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got lots of interaction. Um, yeah, I'll try it. Still missing some of our top end cards, but I'm sure they will show up eventually. Turn one. This might be a situation where we play Vine Lasher with Offspring. In which case, I would prefer to draw another untapped land and save the Fabled Passage. Alright, now that we drew another Vine Lasher, do we still wait? I think I do. Start with a bat. Opponent's got the Unwanted Remake to take it out, and uh, neither of these really matters. And at least we get to have a look, so it's kind of a blue-white control deck. Can destroy either all tapped or untapped creatures, good to keep in mind. 
and they've got no more lives available. So yeah, Cutdown's not going to be particularly effective in this matchup. Still going to play Vine Lasher with Offspring to make them uh, counter it. They could also let it resolve and then split up. But this makes more sense. So Cutdown's not going to find many targets, so it's pretty much a dead card as our opponent plays Meat Locker. Alright, Grievous Wound would pair very nicely with the Vine Lasher. Although, I think I'm still playing it here with Offspring and playing Fabled Passage. Or do we just wait? Problem is, I don't have the guaranteed fifth land for Grievous Wound. Then I don't have to fetch now. We'll see if they have a response. Opponent's gonna split up, dealing with untapped creatures. So we'll get two damage on the way out. And then, yeah, it would be a lovely to resolve a Grievous Wound. Or find some more action spells. So Grievous Wound in play. So now one damage all of a sudden gets amplified. And Ghostly Dancers can unlock their room. So their opponent gets to draw three and discard. Well, I guess we found a target for cutdown at least. There's Bloodletter. So now if I had a creature that could connect with my opponent, we could win the game on the spot. But our opponent's got two blockers, so that's not quite going to work out. Do I even play the Bloodletter when we know about the remake? Yeah, still want to use my mana. But now something like a Vine Lasher could one-hit KO the opponent with a land. And Dancer's attacking is interesting. Yeah, I guess we'll take it. Maybe they just wanted the Dancers to be tapped so they could split up again to destroy my board. That also makes sense, so it could have soaked up some damage. Alright, Slasher at least can uh, stick around after a remake. And it also threatens the lethal with a Grievous Wound. Opponent's got an Entity Tracker, although can cut that down at least. So cut down still found some uses. They get to bounce the Slasher, make a 3-1. And Avarice the draw, so can play it with Spree to tutor up a specific card. And then with Grievous Wounds, we're sort of struggling to connect with the opponent since they have a bunch of blockers. So maybe it's not Bloodletter, but we would rather get the uh, Vine Lasher and then hope to draw Fabled Passage as well, which we actually did. All right, so no real need to play it now. Can play it next turn after playing Vine Lasher with Offspring and then hope they don't have any relevant interaction. Opponent's gonna unlock another room, make a 3-1. They get to draw a bunch, have Remake available. But it's time to Vine Lash. I guess they should respond to the trigger here before we can play Fabled Passage. They did not. So now those trigger.
One damage, half your life total. One damage, have it again. So now if I sack Fabled Passage and they take out one Vine Lasher, they still end up dying here since it's rounded up. All right, so they had a window to respond and potentially survive, I think. And uh, can get the blood letter. They would have had eight in the air as well next turn. And that'll do it. So close game here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a solid curve. Fine playing the Vine Lasher turn one. Bat into Slasher. And then Avarice to refuel. Try and find some more of our combo pieces. It's going to be a Beastie for starters, a Delirium card. And then Passage will be a nice turn 4 play. And see some Graveyard Enablers. Swarm Weaver could be the pick or twitching doll which can ramp it out. I guess her opponent's got multiple reach creatures. But yeah, Swarm Weaver is kind of the scariest out of them all, I think. And then Beastie cannot block yet, so can get in for one. This making tokens is also a way for the opponent to keep blocking the slasher multiple turns. And three types for Delirium already. So they want to attack into a 2-3 reach. Could still hang on to Fabled Passage in case we find another Vine Lasher we want to play with Offspring. So Delirium is now enabled, Beastie can attack and block. So it can trade for a Slasher. And Twitching Doll is next. Alright, go for the throat. Cannot answer artifact creatures. Can take out the Brute Spinner at least. So maybe that's worth it so I can play Avarice with the full Spree next turn. To tutor up exactly what we want. Yeah, I can buy that. And I don't mind trading Slasher here. And there's another Swarm Weaver after all. And Bloodletter, the draw. Okay, so I could go Bloodletter, Fabled Passage, or we can just set up Avarice to get our enchantments which I think is the pick, so we can win with Vine Lasher without needing to attack. Because it's going to be difficult to get through with a Slasher at this point. And get a Grievous Wound. And some lands to go with it. So now it's kind of a race, our combo versus a regular combat damage. There's already two states name in the graveyard, so is this where they get to search up the 9-9? Nine -nine? And a beastie. Opponent sends in everyone. So that gives us the opportunity to attack with a bant as well. And yeah, opponent's gonna use the ability, so I guess they just need three in the graveyards. And there's a nice 9-9 nine -nine trample, that's impressive. So what can I do here? Grievous Wound, play a land, deals one damage half their life total, attack again half their life total. I don't think that's enough to survive. 
and Blood Latter doesn't improve the situation. So I think we're dead, but uh, next turn we would have been able to combo off for sure. So maybe if I hang back with a Deep Cavern Bat, can I survive? I think I'll still be a little bit short. Because of the Trampler mainly. So you have the Bat attacks. Go to 5, lose half your life total. Still not quite enough. Would like the Vile Lasher to survive alongside Bloodletter. I guess her opponent no longer has Delirium. So that's maybe relevant. Alright, drag to the roots, take out the bats. And now Delirium is back. And that should do it. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got Grievous Wound plus Vine Lasher. Maybe a way to play it with Offspring. And then a bunch of removal. So, yeah. Depending on the matchup, could be alright. And, uh, yeah, for now, maybe play the Swamp, see if we can hang on to Fabled Passage until after we play Vine Lasher with Offspring. Now I'll probably um, just play Vine Lasher and Passage in the same turn. So we can play Slasher on three. And I will want to fetch here. Opponent with an up the Beanstalk. So some sort of domain deck. Alright, we've got Slasher and then another Fabled Passage coming up. And then Grievous Wound could be fun. Opponent has the planes, which means they can now Leyline Binding for 3 mana. So step 1 is probably to attack, opponent exile Slasher, and then we can play the Bat second main. Opponent lost damage happen. And falls to 6. And then now Fabled Passage can put him to 4 essentially. And Pona did have the Leyline Binding, but they were maybe being patient since last time they got punished since we had the Demon afterwards. So I actually don't mind cutting down my own Slasher just so we eventually get it back since there's no way I can free it from the Leyline Binding unless I guess Zur is involved somehow and animates the Binding into a creature. And then the Scroll Shift is good with the Overlord. But I think we just take the Overlord, and then they don't have a way to really impact the board all that much. And then we can hang on to Fabled Passage. In case we draw another Vine Lasher, I can play it with Offspring, and then maybe close out the game by fetching. Now I guess Scroll Shift can target the Binding, which now doesn't have anything underneath to take something away from me. Since it does target enchantments as well. Alright, so found a land. Yeah, I guess we'll play the land, see what happens. Does our opponent scroll shift? They don't. So now I just move to attackers. Is there a point in playing the Grievous Wounds first? I guess I could put my opponent to one. Sure. Their opponent cannot gain life. They'll probably scroll shift binding to exile the Grievous Wounds. And then I can still attack. And that'll do it. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got some good interaction. The uh, council to get Bloodletter plus Slasher. So we'll give it a shot.
opponent just sky colors. Gets rid of a case, so maybe a tokens deck. Um, yeah, I'm probably going to struggle to curve out perfectly, so may as well have a look with a bat while we can. And it's a room deck. The uh, furnace times two can take out the bat. So, yeah, I guess uh, there's no real point in taking anything since they have duplicates. Opponent now actually playing the Glimmer, and then they can still play a Furnace for one mana. Wouldn't mind an untapped land. So now we can cut down the Glimmer and still tutor up the uh, Demon here. So this can still potentially take out our Demon if it deals four or more damage. So we might want to try and flush it out with a Slasher. Studio provides some card advantage. Finds two lands, that's probably a pretty good hit for them. And a Grievous Wound, not a bad draw. And then next turn with a land. Grievous Wound plus Slasher could be lethal, or play Bloodletter, so they're kind of forced to answer the Slasher, but it will eventually come back. No need to sack Fable Passage right now. Actively want to draw lands, and uh, could enable landfall for us as well. So their opponents starting to unlock more and more doors. The attacking creatures doesn't matter. And find another slasher. So, sure. Could play it here. And then either Grievous Wound or Bloodletter could set up the kill. So, opponent needs to try and find another answer with the studio. Finds case, which does not have any creatures to go with it. So it looks like they're just dead here to the Bloodletter, and they scoop it up onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got what looks like a Keeper. Avarice to draw to hit our land drops. I think I'm okay playing Vine Lasher on turn one, since we have another three mana play available. And it's going to be a gremlin from our opponents. Okay, so stick to the plan. Avarice to draw. And we found Bloodletter, so yeah, just need to keep hitting our land drops, and then Bloodletter into Grievous Wound could seal the deal. It's going to be Enduring Innocence. Can also maybe shut down the life gain with Grievous Wound. As we draw another one, it's a bit much. Still leaning Bloodletter. Alternatively, we could cut down the Gremlin Avarice again, just to ensure 5 mana for Grievous Wound. If I play Bloodletter and they remove it, I'll be pretty sad. But I do want to get it in play. Next up is Arabella. Their opponent's drawing and discarding a bunch. But they don't get in there. And we did find the lanes, so... Let's see if we get there with a Grievous Wound. Send in Bloodletter. That connects. Opponent loses a bunch more life and then just dies on the spot. 
All right, so we got to see our mono black demon combo deck in action, and there's more ways than ever before to combo off with a blood letter. We're not even playing all of them in this deck, but uh, yeah, I've been pretty impressed by some of the new inclusions. The slasher, especially, has kind of a recursive threat that uh, the opponent might have to deal with multiple times. So we might see an increase in removal spells that exile creatures, which was already sort of the case as a good answer to all the hard fire heroes out of the mono red deck. But now slasher incentivizes people even more. So yeah, overall this deck seems quite powerful, games are over quickly, so it seems like a good deck for your daily quests as well, and I believe it's going to be decent in the monored meta, so it should be good for ranking up as well. Can maybe still play around with some of the numbers in the deck, I've also considered adding an Iron Crank for a bit of mana acceleration, but overall the deck seems functional as is. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.